Number 60. The osmotic pressure of a solution containing 7.0 grams of insulin per liter is 23 torr at 25 degrees Celsius. Assuming ideal solution behavior, what is the molar mass of the insulin? Okie dokie. So we got a lot of things going on here, right? They told us that we had 7.0 grams of the insulin, right? Grams is a mass. We're in per liter. They gave us a pressure value. I know that this is a pressure because tor, the unit for the to for unit for tor is always pressure. Now, this 23 tor is going off of the osmotic pressure, right? They gave you a lot of stuff in the middle, right? 27 grams per liter, but the osmotic pressure of this solution is 23 uh, tor. So we know that this osmotic pressure goes with the 23 tor and all this other extra stuff in the middle, that's just like extra information. And they gave us a temperature. Now, the thing that they want us to find out is the molar mass. Well, let's just first find out what the general molar mass formula is, right? A general molar mass formula is always is basically just a fraction, right? When you're using the periodic table and you're finding out molar masses, those units are always grams per mole. So grams has to be on top and per just means division and mole has to be on the bottom. And if you're finding out a molar mass, it has to be of a single compound molecule or an element. In this case, they're asking for the molar mass of insulin. So the grams of the insulin that you have is on the top and the moles of the insulin is on the bottom. Now, insulin, right, used with type one diabetics is a huge molecule. So right off the bat, I'm gonna assume that whatever number we're gonna get is probably going to be a pretty large number. But let's see, that's our hypothesis. Let's see if we are correct. Now, did they tell us the grams of the insulin? Yes, they did. They told us that we had seven grams of this, 7.0 grams of the insulin. But, so we got, we got 50% of the question correct, right? You know, 50% of it that we know. Do we know the moles of the insulin? That they didn't tell us, right? They didn't give us a mole value. So I'm going to have to find this out a different way. But they gave us a very, very, very big hint here. We are using specifically an osmotic pressure. There's only one formula for specifically an osmotic pressure, and that is this formula right here. So anytime that they say osmotic pressure, bam, I know that I'm going to be using this formula because this capital P, right? I think this is Greek, right? The lowercase p is the pi that we know and love in math, 3.14. In chemistry, this is a capital P, and this is the osmotic pressure. Okay, so they gave us 23 tor. Now let's just keep going on. Osmotic pressure is going to equal capital M. Capital M is the molarity. Did they give us a molarity in this question? I don't see any capital M numbers, right? We already used the seven grams, so that's not it. 23 tor, that's the osmotic pressure. Liter is just a volume, and the 25 is the temp. So they didn't give us a molarity. The R value is the constant R value that is going to be used every time if you use this formula. Now there's two R values, depending on if you're dealing with pressure or energy. In this case, we're dealing with pressure. So the R value is 0.0821, or if you want to be more specific, it's 8206. And the units for the R value is ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. But uh-oh, if the R value units of the pressure is atmosphere, ATM, and the osmotic pressure is tor, that's not good. We need to convert this tor into ATM. You always convert into your units for your R. But that's okay. We could, we could do that, right? 23 tor, that was, an, that was an ugly three, tor goes to ATM. Tor to ATM, keep in mind that remember there's 
uh, one ATM for every one ATM, one atmosphere, there's 760 tor and there's 760 millimeters of mercury. So the same conversion is used for both of them. So if you have tor and you want to get to ATM, all you have to do is just divide by 760. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. 73 divided by 760 and I get 0 0.0303. Sure. So I'm just going to say, okay, that's the new pressure in ATM. They are equivalent, but just in different units. So I have my osmotic pressure, check. I have my R value, check. The temperature, capital T, temperature. Uh, they did give me a temperature, right? 25 degrees Celsius. However, the units of R tell me Kelvin. So I just have to quickly convert from Celsius to Kelvin. This is adding 273, or if you want to be more exact, you can add 273.15. So this would be, maybe I'll write it down here. This would be 298.15 Kelvin. And now we are ready to plug it in, right? Because we have the temperature, we are solving for the molarity. Okay, so I'll start on this side, I guess. 0 0.0303 equals molarity, which is X, times my two values, my R times my T. Temperature is 298.15, and the R value is 0 0.08206. We can get the right side to being one number, so 0 0.08206. 8206 times 298.15. Okay. So we get 24.466 times x. Get x by itself. Divide on both sides by 24.466. And we will solve for the molarity. So I'm just going to take the full number up here just so that we get the most exact answer. You only try to round at the end. So if you have a calculator like this, this is why I love the TI-84s. Um, you know, it stores all your information. So you could just, you know, keep, you know, pulling it up, dropping it down, and it just runs you less chance of error. So, okay. So here we go. X equals 0.00124. And that's molarity. But molarity is not the same as moles. But maybe by finding out this molarity, I'm a step closer to finding the moles. Because now I say to myself, okay, is there any molarity formula that I know? Dun, dun, dun. Right? <laughs> molarity equals the moles ah, divided by the liters. So we found out that the molarity was 0 0.00124 molarity. We can solve for the moles. And do we know the liters? Well, they gave us a hint here. They said that we had seven grams per liter. How many liters is this if they just say per liter? Yeah, it's per one liter. So you have one liter going on here. That's my volume, one liter. So, I mean, if we do set this up, 0 0.00124 equals x over 1, if we just, you know, examine it, if we do cross multiplication, it's going to be the same number because anything times by 1 is the same. So we're going to get x equals 0 0.00124 moles, and this is the moles of the insulin. Okay, 0 0.00124 so we can finally find out that molar mass. Molar mass equals the grams divided by the moles. The grams they told us in the beginning was the 7.0. And now we just found out the moles, 0 0.00124. We hypothesized that it was going to be a roughly a big, big number. So let's see. When I say big, maybe like, you know, over 100. 0, 1, 2, 4. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. 
crazy huge molecule. The molar mass is. Now, uh, technically, we only have two sig figs here. We started off with two. So I can only give it back into two. So 5.6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. And grams and moles are two totally different units. They do not cancel out. So you have to keep those units in the units for molar mass. And that is the answer. So insulin is a pretty, pretty huge molecule. And we have tons of those in our body. So we either make it by ourselves uh, via the pancreas or... Um, we have to, you know, inject it into ourselves for, you know, type 1 diabetics. But either way, insulin is a very key, important molecule in the body. And hopefully one day when we start doing biology videos on the channel, um, we'll get into more in depth into this hormone. But anyway, thank you for coming to the channel. I hope this helped. I uh, love talking to you guys in the comments. Thank you so much for your kind comments uh, as far as, you know, this whole journey. We wouldn't be here without you, my brother and I. We really do appreciate all you guys who use this channel to, you know, do awesome on your tests and quizzes in chem, physics, and math. So thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.